Are you aware of anyone in your family who is depressed, suicidal, maybe exhibits mood swings? If you were to give this person an IQ test, would they score below average? If you were able to answer yes to any of these questions, I think I'm able to offer you a solution. It's a new psychosurgical procedure that has helped over 50,000 people. The psychosurgical procedure is called a prefrontal cortex leucotomy, or in common parlance, a lobotomy. The procedure can be done by your personal psychologist, and with recent innovations, your personal psychologist can now perform the procedure in his office. So, I'll reiterate, do you think that your loved one would benefit from a lobotomy? Because from what I've seen and read, those who go through with it are left speechless. This is the Kennedy family coat of arms. It was granted to President John F. Kennedy in 1961 by the Chief Herald of Ireland at that time. This coat of arms is significant because today we're going to be talking about the Kennedy family and specifically one member, Rosemary Kennedy. The Kennedy family is an American political family that has been present in the United States since 1884. There's approximately 30 members of the family, most of which are lawyers, authors, and activists. The first patriarch of the family, Joseph Patrick Kennedy Sr., was responsible for establishing the family's wealth and future political influence. Joseph Kennedy Sr. amassed his fortune through banking and securities trading, which he further expanded by investing into other industries. He was also appointed by Franklin D. Roosevelt as the first chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission, and soon after that he would be appointed as the U.S. Ambassador to the United Kingdom in the lead-up to World War II. This photo was taken in 1931 at the Kennedy Compound, located in Massachusetts. The estate is six acres of pure waterfront property, and it was purchased by the Kennedy Patriarch in order for the whole family to live there. This picture is significant because when compared to a picture taken at the same compound 30 years later, one person is strangely missing. To the far right is Rosemary Kennedy. She was 12 years old when this picture was taken, only nine days away from her 13th birthday. This photo was taken September 7th of 1963. It was Joseph P. Kennedy Sr.'s birthday. Everyone in the family arrived to celebrate, except for one person, Rosemary Kennedy. She would have been 45 years old, and the reason why she didn't attend her father's birthday is because he sent her to an asylum 20 years prior. A lobotomy, or leucotomy, was a surgery conducted by a psychologist that severs the connections in the brain's prefrontal cortex. It was a common treatment meant to cure mental disorders and homosexuality. The treatment begins with the patient shaving his or her head. Then a hole is drilled into the right or left temples of the skull. After the hole is drilled, an orbitoclast is placed inside, and then the doctor begins to move up, down, left, and right with the intentions of destroying the prefrontal cortex. Now the image that you see in front of you shows the orbitoclast along with a hammer. You see, over the two decades that this procedure was in practice, some developments to the procedure were made so that it would become less invasive. This new type of lobotomy was called the transorbital lobotomy. The procedure is similar to what I've described before, but with one difference. Instead of drilling into the side of the patient's head, the orbitoclast is placed under the eyelid, and then the hammer is used to tap the orbitoclast into the skull. This was seen as a more efficient and cleaner method because the bone that makes up the orbital socket is thinner and easier to penetrate than the bone found on the side of your head. This also made it possible for psychiatrists and psychologists to perform this procedure in their offices. The brainchild of the lobotomy is a neurologist named Antonio Manez. He shared the Nobel Prize for Physiology in 1949 for the discovery of the therapeutic value of the leucotomy. This is important to note because if he hadn't received the Nobel Prize, there would definitely have been more skepticism about his new procedure. Unfortunately, at that time, neurology as a science was still developing. Any potential procedure or research that could further the science was encouraged, and at that time there was hardly any scrutiny made to any claim concerning neurology and psychology. And consequently, 50,000 people, 80% of which were women, were subjected to medical mutilation because people genuinely believed that lobotomies would cure mental illness. Rose Marie Kennedy, or Rosemary Kennedy, 
was born September 13, 1918. She was the eldest daughter of Joseph P. Kennedy Sr. and Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy. Rosemary was born in Boston, Massachusetts, but her birth wasn't typical due to the rampant spread of Spanish influenza. The family physician wasn't available to help Rose give birth to Rosemary. The attending family nurse told Rose Kennedy to keep her legs together. This was made as an attempt to buy time, but Rose Kennedy couldn't manage that for long. The nurse then attempted to push Rosemary back into the vaginal canal as a means of buying even more time for the physician to arrive. The nurse prevented the birth for two hours, and the effects of this decision only became clear as Rosemary grew older. You see, during the birthing process, Rosemary didn't get enough oxygen, and as a consequence, her development was stalled. While her siblings were walking, she was still crawling. While her siblings were speaking, she was silent. She would eventually develop these skills, but way later than the average child. Her developmental delays were so pronounced that she had to repeat kindergarten and first grade. Accounts of Rosemary's life indicated that she was mentally retarded. The modern classification of her condition would be intellectually disabled. But these claims are disputed. Many biographers have raised questions about the Kennedy's accounts of the nature and scope of her disability. Specifically, biographers noted that Rose Kennedy did not confide in her friends and she even pretended that her daughter was developing typically, with relatives other than the immediate family knowing nothing of Rosemary's reported low IQ. It is known that Rosemary had trouble reading and writing all the way up to the age of 11, and that the most education that she could manage to complete was up to grade five. The fact that she couldn't progress past the fifth grade is commonly cited as evidence that she wasn't intellectually disabled. Typically, in the United States, fifth grade students are introduced to higher level arithmetic, usually multiplication, division, order of operations, and basic algebra. The mentally retarded or intellectually disabled are incapable of performing problem solving of this level. The fact that Rosemary Kennedy has been reported to be able to complete this level of work has led historians and biographers to believe that she was misdiagnosed. After reconciling their beliefs about their daughter, Joe and Rose Kennedy believed that holding Rose to the same overachieving standard as their other children would cure her of her behavioral and developmental issues. Rosemary understood what her parents expected of her, and those expectations and standards were challenging for her to reach. She wrote to her father, I would do anything to make you happy. I hate to disappoint you in any way. Come to see me very soon. I get very lonesome every day. At this time, Joe Sr. had sent Rosemary to a Catholic boarding school that promised to help her through her mental illness and behavioral issues. Many family members and friends of the family noted that even during this difficult time, Rosemary Kennedy still had a very vibrant personality. She loved swimming, she had a big smile, she loved fashion, and she was looked up to as a role model by her younger siblings. There would come a moment where her mother would be dismayed by how many people liked Rosemary's personality and how many men would approach her over her normal sisters. For example, in 1938, the Kennedy family were invited to the United Kingdom because Joe Sr. was personally appointed by FDR to become the UK ambassador. During this visit to the United Kingdom, the Kennedy family met the royal family. And despite only having two weeks to prepare, Rosemary Kennedy aced all of the customs that she had been taught, and she excelled in speaking to the royal family and other elite socialites during this visit. Her mother absolutely loathed the fact that her mentally ill daughter was so well liked by other people. She was afraid that any moment the world would find out that Rosemary Kennedy wasn't perfect. And unfortunately, her father felt the same way. Joe Sr. along with Rose would alienate themselves from Rosemary, sending her from boarding school to boarding school in hopes that a change in learning environment would cure her of her mental illness. And even during this time when she was being sent to school to school, she was improving, but just not fast enough. Her behavior got worse. She would frequently sneak out of her boarding school, shout and hit others, and would frequently experience convulsions. Joe Sr. was aware of her behavior and was terrified that the public would find out that a Kennedy was acting like this. So he reached out to psychologists. And when Rosemary was 23 years old, doctors recommended that he look into lobotomy for Rosemary. They told him that it would help her calm down and completely stop her violent outbursts. Joe Jr. decided that Rosemary should have the lobotomy. However, he did not inform his wife, Rose, until after the procedure was completed. The procedure was completed in 1941, and it went like this. Rosemary's head was shaved. She was strapped to an operating table and kept awake for the surgery. The doctors asked her to sing songs and recite the Lord's Prayer. This was meant to be a distraction during the procedure. The doctors knew the procedure was complete when she stopped singing, and when she woke up the next day, she never spoke again. 
what was once a manageable behavioral problem was now something far worse. The brain damage was so significant that within a day, her cognitive level had regressed to the state of a two-year-old. After the lobotomy, she was immediately institutionalized. She initially lived for several years at the Craig House, a private psychiatric hospital 90 minutes north of New York City. But then she was moved to Jefferson, Wisconsin, out of fear that people might find out that a Kennedy is institutionalized in New York City. And from there, she remained for 57 years. Her father never visited her. Her mother would visit her 20 years later. While her brother John was campaigning for re-election for the Senate in 1958, the Kennedy family explained away her absence by claiming she was reclusive. The Kennedy family didn't publicly explain her absence until 1961, after John had been elected for president. The Kennedys did not reveal that she was institutionalized because of a failed lobotomy, but instead she was deemed mentally retarded. Following her father's death in 1969, the Kennedys gradually involved Rosemary in their life again, occasionally bringing her out to family outings and into the public light. By that time, Rosemary had learned to walk again, but did so with a limp. She never regained the ability to speak clearly. Rosemary Kennedy died from natural causes on January 7, 2005, aged 86, never knowing why her family abandoned her. What's up everybody, it's your boy Aileris, aka Panda Daddy, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and leave a like if you liked the video. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe fam. What you doing watching videos and not subscribing? And if you're old, make sure you hit that bell so you get these notifications every time. We've got one more Morbid Reality, it's going to be posted on Friday. Hope you guys are really excited for that, that's going to be the extra long episodes, the proper Morbid Reality episode with different posts, different stories. Uh, I really like doing these long form special episodes, if you do like them too, let me know in the comments down below, like I said before. Before. I love to always get that feedback and as always we have to thank the patreon supporters that make content like this specifically possible a big thank you to a sleep Queen Kajina Tazluth a generic fox fur Drago scuffy soup Viva LaRue witty username I didn't bought my viewers true Benny's big bean burrito Danny Wanny has a big fanny spunky funky monkey chunky chunky tanky winky knobby wobby Upanut D4C, My Name Tani, Kiri the Sloth, Lady Laughs A Lot, Mina Swift, Esau, Destroyer, Muffy Luhu, Noah, Vermont, John Robinson, Eva, Catherine Taylor, Hannah, and Will Billy. Thank you so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And if you want to help support the channel, there's two links in the description one of my merch store and one of my Patreon. Both funds go really into the channel so we can maintain what's happening here. And as always, stay zesty.